This is going to be tutorial number one in the series of tutorials for building the application which I like to call the Drive, which is of course for the Quest device. It's a VR application uh, and this is stage one. And like I said, this is part one. So uh, I will be switching back and forth between the project and between this written guide, which of course the written guide itself will be available for you also in your course show. Uh, let's look at the setup. We start by duplicating the VR um, uh, Quest Empty project, the one um, that probably you still have from uh, the previous course. Just make sure that it's a recent one, uh, not one from like last year because things have changed. Uh, also make sure that you duplicate the whole folder and also make sure that you're not duplicating the mixed reality empty templates that we created for other projects in previous courses, because this is a VR. This guide is compatible with uh, Unity version 2022.3 point whatever is the latest LTS. And uh, once you change the name of the folder from, you know, empty template or whatever, uh, you need to change it to whatever your name is, Drive. Uh, and of course, add it in the Unity Hub and open. Um, and which I already did. So I already changed it to uh, Drive Lab uh, One Practice. Um, and I opened it with a Unity Hub. And so far it looks just like the empty template. Um, then I'm going to check that my Meta XR Core SDK, the one that used to be called the Oculus package, is updated by going to Window package manager and the easiest way I know to find it is simply to search for the word meta and here it is meta xr core sdk right now as I'm recording this the latest version is 67 if it you know had like a little up arrow it means that it needs to be updated other things to take care of in the setup um In Package Manager, Packages, Project, make sure you have update, the updated version of the XR uh, plugin management. Let's see. So in, if I don't search for Meta and I just look at Packages, the VR uh, plugin management is the latest one. I'm also going to look at uh, the Oculus XR plugin. It's also the latest one. Um, then, uh, from the course shell, you're going to, oh, sorry, number four, don't forget to change the project name in edit project settings. This is something I, you know, I almost forgot, um, in edit project settings under, let's bring it in, uh, player. The name of the project is here and I already changed it, but, uh, it will probably for you say like, you know, empty or whatever. I'm going to call it uh, drive one, let's say, uh, vid because I have a lot of versions and this is the one I'm using for recording this video and as usual save, but also save project. Um, Something I already download, uh, did, which you will have to do, is go to the course shell and download a zip called Drive uh, Stage 1 Teacher Pack. It's a zip. You're going to unzip it. It unzips into a folder with the same name. I'm going to copy this whole folder into my project assets. And of course, because it has a lot of things in it, it might take time to import. But eventually, you will see it right here as a folder in your assets. And when I look at it, it's got some models. It's got some textures, materials. Uh, it's got um, a Unity package called Standard Assets, which we will use later on. Maybe we used it in the past as well. And it's got some other models for, you know, things we're going to use. And uh, last but not least, pretty important, in Edict Project Settings, Meta XR, let's see if there are any recommendations uh, or fixes that we need to do. I'm talking about going to Edit project settings and meta xr and i have one recommended item remember yellow stuff is recommended which you know never hurts to do if there's red stuff it's mandatory to fix it now in order to avoid annoying messages make sure that you do it on all three uh, or whatever platforms you got the most important one of course is android 
I'm going to apply all, but I'm going to check that there are no warnings or recommendations on the other platforms as well. And finally, we are ready to actually start. Uh, I'm going to change the name of the sample scene too. I could start a new scene, but it already has one or two things I need, so I might as well use the one I got to uh, drive stage one. So here's the sample scene, and I'm going to change its name to drive stage one. One. What we're going to do, of course, is have the same project every stage we add, but we're going to duplicate the scene for stage two and stage three, and that way we have like a history of what we did. And once the scene is called drive stage one, the next thing I'm going to do is, because I want to make sure that I see exactly what the camera is supposed to see, I'm going to change the, the game window. I think we've done this in the past to an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, which is what the cameras in the Quest are calibrated to see. So usually your game window, I like to put my game window here, you might still be using the default setting where game is beside scene. What I like to do is take the game and drag it here and I have my own setup that I saved. You can save layout, I have my own one that I like. Uh, the important thing is that instead of free aspect, which kind of changes, you know, with the size of the window, I'm going to change it to 16 by 9 landscape, which means even if the window gets big or small, what I see through the camera always stays the same ratio. So now I, if I see something, I know that the Quest camera will see it. The next thing uh, is to delete the camera we got right now. What we probably have right now is the OVR player controller because this is the one we used for creating the empty template. We're going to replace it with something really similar, which is the OVR camera rig. The only difference between them is that the OVR camera rig uh, doesn't have its own, like, you know, uh, engine. It doesn't have its own um, um, constant force. It needs something else to move it, which will be, of course, the vehicle, the car. Um, and to do that, I'm going to take the OVR player controller, delete, uh, and the place where I can find the camera rig is either by searching for it by name or under packages. In packages, the Meta XR Core SDK. It's got a folder called prefabs, and here it is. Drag it right in. Then it says to give it some uh, settings, but those are going to be very, very temporary. Give it these parameters for now. These will change later. As you can see, the own, it's all default, except the Y is 1.8, because I want to make sure that I'm above the plane. But that's going to change. 1.8 meters, which is like the height of an average person. Save. Um, Then it says on step four that we should already have a plane that we created from the template. And I do. We're going to use it. Just change a little bit. It should uh, have any material that has details on it because we're going to test it for driving. And it's really hard to see something driving on a totally smooth, uh, like uh, solid color plane. So any material that has details on it, like, you know, uh, uh, some texture is good. But we're going to give it some different uh, parameters. And as you can see, most of them are in scale. We're going to change the X scale and the Z scale to 100 because we want a really big plane. So this plane right now is one by one. We're going to change it to X 100, very, very wide, and Z 100, very, very deep. No need to ch touch the Y because a plane has no height. And right now I got like a really big floor. Something else you might want to do if you want to, if the texture looks too stretched, is to change its, um, it doesn't say that in the, um, in the guide, but I can change the tiling to be, let's say 100 by 100 to get the same you know feel that i had before so it doesn't look stretched but that's totally uh optional as you will see we won't even be using this uh the last time we'll be using this is you know at the end of stage two and then we'll be deleting this plane anyway or um, um, hiding it but for right now this looks good to me then 
once we did the plane, we're going to create an empty project, uh, which we're going to call player. That's going to be pretty important. So it doesn't say if the name has to be exact because it's not going to appear in a script like the name itself. The object definitely is, but the name is not. I'd rather stick to conventions and start with in a capital P. I'm going to reset its position. And pretty much for right now, that's the only thing we're doing. We're going to add a lot more things to it. Um, add an empty game object, call it player. Uh, move the OVR camera rig to be a child of player. And notice what we're doing to it. We're changing its height, its Y, and its Z to be a little in the back. So first of all, I'm going to take the OVR camera rig and make it a child of a player, kind of drag it in. And then instead of 1.8, 1.5, a little lower, and negative 2.3. What are we really doing here? We're going to be driving a car, and we're actually placing the camera a little above the car. This is like the height of a, like the average roof of a car, and a little behind the car. So we can see the car right in front of us driving, while we're basically like mounting the camera on the car. The next thing we're going to do, let's see if I did everything there. Yep. As a child of player, in other words, it's going to be a sibling to the camera. We're going to create another empty object and call it vehicle, which is going to be like the visible part of the vehicle. So player, right click, create empty. Now player has two children and the new one is called vehicle. And I'm going to make sure that I reset transform. Sometimes you don't have to, but many times uh, it inherits, you know, the last settings that you used for something. Um, so it needs to look like this. The hierarchy player has vehicle and the OVR camera rig. As a child of vehicle, we're going to create a capsule and we're going to change its name to base. And we're going to give it the following parameters. It's going to be like the chassis of the car, the base of the car, uh, including material. We should already have a bunch of materials called metal pattern and with, then with numbers from the teacher's assets that we uh, imported. But the more important thing is to give it these settings. So what I'm going to do just so I can see it better, is move this here and minimize this window here. That way I can. Again, we're going to create it as a child of vehicle. All the parts of the vehicle are going to be inside vehicle. Right click, 3D object, Capsule. You'll see why it's a capsule because, you know, you might say, what does a capsule have to do with a car? By the time we kind of uh, squish it, call it base because it's the base of the car, it's going to start looking like you know, the base of, you know, either a car or like a, a surfboard or something like that. Um, it's going to be a rather low Y, 0 0.39. Um, the uh, X and the... Uh, the X and the Z stay the same. It's going to be rotated because right now it's standing up and I need it lying down. Uh, so Sorry, that's the wrong angle. It needs to be rotated on the X axis. And you see how now it's like a pill. It's lying down. Now comes the scaling that's really going to make it look more like a base for something. So the scale X is not going to change by much. 0 0.78. Eight. Later on, of course, when we finish the game, all this will be changed. This is going to be a very schematic car. Y will change one, but Z will become much narrower, 0 0.32. And as you can see now, if I get closer, now it looks more like a surfboard. And we're going to start building the car on that. Um, the other thing that it says to give to the car is the metal pattern one. Um, material and all those materials you should already have them because you imported them and it's you know a pretty nice material i actually like it a lot it's got a lot of um like if i select something else it's got a lot of holes in it and stuff like that one thing that it doesn't say in the guide is that these materials use a shader which is, um, for some reason, not, let's say, the most efficient one for um, 
VR. So when I look at the material, uh, it might have a, a shader other than standard. I already changed it to standard. Standard will just be, it will look exactly the same. It won't change anything about it. I think before that it had some kind of a legacy, you know, shader from here and I changed it to uh, standard, but it's not mandatory. I haven't seen a big difference. Um, the other thing that's really important, and it actually says that in big bold letters, is to either delete or disable the capsule collider. This car is gonna have a whole set of colliders that have nothing to do with the way it looks. That way we can change the look of the car without changing its behavior. So the, what I'm going to do is definitely either delete or to be more careful, disable the capsule collider, but this has no collider, save. The next step is uh, to start like giving it a little, a few more parts. From the teacher's pack, I'm gonna find a prefab called U-pipe, not U-shape two. There's two of them, so don't forget, don't confuse the names, and drag it to be one more child of vehicle, not a child of the base, but basically a brother uh, of the base. Um, give it the following parameters so first of all i'm going to find from the teachers pack something called u-pipe drag it to be a child of the vehicle and at first it looks huge and totally like you know unrelated but once i give it the right parameters which are going to be um uh, x0, y 0 0.737, uh, z negative 0 0.58. The most important change that's going to happen is that the rotation of the x, instead of being basically like, you know, 90 degrees, which is the way it came, is going to be 180 degrees. So right now it looks, you know, like an arc. And then we're going to scale it to be much smaller. Look at this huge scale. By the way, when you see this huge scales, it's usually a hint that whoever designed this uh, modeled it in Blender. Blender usually comes in with like scales that are either 100 times too big or 100 times too small compared to Unity. So we're going to change it to actually be much smaller. It's going to be 22.09 on the X and uh, 21, those are just numbers that I experimented with. There's nothing wrong or right about them. It's just the way I like it to look. Uh, and they're all around 20 and 19.45. And as you can see, what that does is put this um, arc like at the back of the car, like, you know, so at least we know where the back and the front is. Uh, and then it says to give it a material, which is metal pattern two. So under mesh renderer materials, metal pattern 22, sorry. And the reason I like it is because it's got those grooves in it. Um, again, one thing that you might want to do is go and change the shader to standard, but it's not mandatory. Um, let's see if we did everything we need to yeah metal pattern 22 good and then as another child of vehicle we're going to create a cylinder we're going to call it front axle so as another child of vehicle i'm going to create a cylinder i'm going to call it for front axle and as you can see of course right now it looks ridiculous it looks like i put you know like a metal can in front of it uh let's spell axle correctly but let's see what parameters we're going to give it to make it look exactly really like a front axle it's going to have the following settings um 0, 0 0.25, 0, 0 
25 so it's a little above ground um and a little back and as you can see this is going to actually make quite a difference 0 0.5586 0 0.5586 um then the most important change about it is that it's going to be rotated on the z-axis by 90 degrees you see how it's already looking like it's going side to side um then its scale is going to change pretty significantly to make it look like it's round 0 0.2 on the x and the z and its width is really the y-axis because it's rotated on its side 0 0.6 by the time i do that what I actually have is like a front axle that's right under the car, a little above ground. And you can see how, you know, it's just ready for me to put wheels on it. The other thing that I'm going to do is give it the same material that I used before, which is metal pattern 22. Again, because of those grooves, I just like it. You guys are going to change it later on to whatever you want. And if it looks right, and it's you know sitting nicely under the car let's see if there's anything else oh something pretty important since it started as a cap uh, as a cylinder for some reason cylinders come with a capsule collider like i said we don't want any colliders not on the shape of the car not on the visual part of the car so either delete or disable the capsule collider it's so important that i actually put it in big bold letters don't forget to uncheck the capsule collider let's see if there's anything else that i did to it nope that's it the capsule collider and the transform and the metal since we need two axles a front one and a back one we're going to duplicate the front one call it rear one and give it the following parameters which are really the same parameters and the only change is that we're going to turn the z into a negative so it looks like it's in the back so front axle edit duplicate call it rear axle and the only difference would be that it's z is going to have a minus so right now if i look at my vehicle it should look like this of course you know right now i'm holding um if it was windows alt if it was it's a mac so i'm holding option and i'm just uh, rotating around let me stop this part of the tutorial and i will see you in uh, part two of the tutorial where we will add the wheels